It's tea time, positive tea time, and we are spilling all of it right here in this space created by two crazy fun-loving besties. It's a no-judgment zone for sharing stories of hope, faith, love, growth, and most of all, grace and gratitude. So join us as we get ready to share some positivity and get a fresh perspective on life. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Spilling the Positivity. We are just really excited today, Maria and I. Maria, tell them who we have with us. We have a very special, well, all our guests are special, but oh. we have an extra special guest today. <laughs> all the way from Pittsburgh in Pennsylvania yes. is Sonia Lane Garside, Global Consultant. Welcome, Sonia. Welcome, Sonia. <laughs> she might be from, she might be from um, Pittsburgh now, yes. but she is born and bred Bajan. Yes. Absolutely. Like and that. let me just make a plug for Adua at Astra, Alexandra girl to the bone, babe. Just got a, we got a rep for the girls in the yes, north. Yes, they went to school together, so you know, <laughs> the whole thing going on. And so, and I can also say that I worked with Sonia on one of my first jobs, okay? So we all have claim yes. to Sonia. Yes, you sure do. Sonia, it's such a pleasure to have you here. Sonia, tell us, what have you been up to? Now, we know you've always been in the development sphere. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I guess sex, higher education and all mm -hmm. that. What have you been doing? Tell me, tell yeah. us a little bit about your journey. So, as you say, I did come from a higher education background here in Barbados, and um, you know, I got married about 14 years ago, and I transitioned to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. As I like to say to everyone, my husband is a professor of math at the University of Pittsburgh, and of the two of us, I'm more employable. <laughs> <laughs> I am the one that moved um, because of the job. Um, I went back into the higher education field when I was there because that's what I know, you know, training and developing executive education, masters in leadership, etc. Um, about five years ago, I started my own consultancy, and um, that's what I've been working with um, on now. I've been working with businesses, I've been working with professionals, um, executive coaching. And life coaching. And life coaching, definitely. Dealing with um, training and um, change management and helping organizations. I like to say I partner with leaders so that they can make their people better and the environment and, and create environments in which people can thrive. Okay, yeah. that's excellent. And that goes right into what we're going to talk about yeah, today. Exactly. But before we get into that, I just want to talk a little bit more about the big, the massive change that you made. I think that's yes, something that's our, our, our audience would love to hear. Yes. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that move, because we, 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 we lived that move with you. Yeah. We, we were mm -hmm. part of that. <laughs> yeah. Tell us how that happened. Uh, well, you know, my, my husband decided I'm more employable, and I always say to people, I moved to, I left a very successful career yeah. where I am known, mm -hmm. where I had a network, and I moved to a country where the only person I knew in that state was one person and it was my new husband. Wow. Right, yeah, yeah. That's it. And I couldn't work for two years because we went on a visa that said, right. you know, back then it was the H-1B visa. So after two years, then I could work. And then it was like, I knew no one. I had no connections, nothing. And I had to rebuild from scratch. So wow. you've been married for 14 years, but how long before, how long had you dated? Yes. And it was a long distance. I, right, it was a long distance. So we dated for two years, it was a long distance. And then I landed, and then when we got married, I landed and moved and that was the first time we had lived together yeah wow <laughs> wow but yeah the good thing is we had traveled together okay because we had a, like a pre a pre moon so you know you yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> had a pre honeymoon yeah, pre -honeymoon. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And so we traveled through new zealand for six weeks together wow. and if you really want to know some person absolutely travel yes. with that person <laughs> that is a yeah. fact i will yeah. definitely do yeah. that yeah. exactly that one that is very true yes yeah. we traveled all up and down the two islands of new zealand together and that's where you really but you know the beauty of our relationship is that at, the, at a certain age you get to a point where you say, start as you mean to go on. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so there wasn't any, oh, I'm going to put on my best 
you know, put my best foot forward, I put yes. my best face. Yeah, yeah. 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 This it's is very authentic. Yes. Yes. Take me or leave me. Yes. I mean, in yeah. fairness, Sonia, you've always been that kind yeah, of yeah. person anyway. Yes. This is what you get, right? Yeah. This is what you get, you know, and it it's like, I want you where you are. I don't date based on potentials. So right. Yeah. You gotta be what you are. So we can be honest yes. and authentic. So I think that, that, that is really good, getting to know people, yeah. and building a relationship with a person so that when you are thrown into a situation where you have one, you know, you only know that person, um, you you have a solid foundation yeah. in which to step off mm -hmm. into yeah. the unknown. Yeah. And right. I love to say that that experience taught me that there's beauty in the unknown. Yeah. 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 Pivoting is great. Yeah. You got to create your future. And so when there's uncertainty, look for opportunities to create your future. Say that again. Yes. Because yes. everybody, there's a lot of uncertainty okay. in the world right exactly. now. People are feeling it. So, mm -hmm. so say that one more time. When there's uncertainty, you have to create your future. Mm. You look for the opportunities. And I wow. always say to people, when, I, when we were on our pre-moon, I was, we were in New Zealand and there was a bridge that you passed where people bungee jump off a bridge. Mm -hmm. And I thought to myself, that's what I'm doing with my life, right? I'm bungee jumping. Yes. By leaving everything I know. By that time, I was director of research at, at the Cape School of Business. Going to a new area, I'm just jumping off a, a bridge with, you know, just the, 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 you know, they tie your feet together. Mm -hmm. And what tied my feet together was just the marriage. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So I decided, I'm going to go do that and wow. just test it out. Mm -hmm. and so you actually bungee jumped as well. Yes. Oh, wow. So Fantastic. How were the feet up? Were you? I don't know, but it was really hard. Okay. <laughs> because I have a video of it and it's me at the top when they say, Sony, are you good? And I was like, uh, oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, put them to late. <laughs> That's the uncertainty right yeah, there. Yeah, exactly. And I'm afraid of heights. Yeah. Oh, oh wow. wow, wow. So this was so much fear. And when I when they said, okay, you can you can jump off now, and I said, we can't. You push me, and they said, no, we don't push people off. <laughs> <laughs> you asked me, right? <laughs> I think that would be an illegal issue if yeah, anything yeah. went wrong, okay? No, 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 you have to jump off yourself. And I, and I was like, Sonia, this, this, is, this is life right here. So, you know, grab courage. Courage is what you need. I say that all the time. You don't, need, you don't necessarily need just um, esteem or confidence. Yeah. You need the courage. Yes, to do things absolutely. Like yes. Yeah, yeah. And so yeah. I jumped. And when I jumped, I was literally trying to control myself. I control the way it landed. Can you wow. imagine? Wow. I am at the top of a bridge, jumping off, and I'm trying to control. And somewhere like two seconds later, I realize this is madness. Yes, I, yeah. I can't yeah, this. Yeah, you can't control that, yeah. And once you start go. trying to control what happened. It was the most freeing, exhilarating experience that oh, I wow. have ever had. And that is a metaphor for it's a life. Big life lesson yes, right exactly. there. Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, see, and then you let go and you just let it take you, and it was like Woohoo! This is so great, and I thought this I have to learn from when I go over, you know, when I when I when I transition and, and change my life so one hundred percent is that I am not going to try to control it. Yeah, mm. yeah. I am just going to let go and just ride the wave. Trust the process. Trust the process. Yeah. Look for um, opportunities, and that that's what I really realized, and that's the focus of my book, mm -hmm. which is you got to harness that anxiety. And recognize that doubt is normal, fear is normal, oh, mm -hmm. but you have to just jump off because there's beauty in those unopened, you know, spaces. And I've all every time I get a chance to bungee jump, I do it just to reinforce that. Wow, that's, life yeah. right that's, that's fantastic. Yeah. And and yes, she's an author as well. But um, with all of that, tell us the name of your book. Workplace anxiety: How to refuel and reengage. Because I like to say to people, resilience is about how you refuel not how hard you work or how mm -hmm. hard you grind or how hard you hustle it's about do you take the time to refuel so that you have enough energy to move through and of course i work with a lot of leaders and mm -hmm. there's a lot of stressors in uh, work and i like to tell people the stressors aren't the issue it's how you respond mm -hmm. exactly to the stressors. but that isn't that thing. life completely whether <laughs> yeah. it's work yeah. school whatever yeah. it is i yeah. mean the truth is is that it's not what happens to you, it's how you respond to what happens yes. to you. Yeah. But that anxiety and that fear is real because I have an issue with fear and anxiety. Mm. I have an issue with trying to control things and when I feel like stuff is out of my control, that's when the anxiety yes. goes through the roof. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, 
and I have high functioning anxiety. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Which yeah. isn't a medical term, but it's it it it's where you you're you're functioning really well, and to the outside world you look that like everything is yes. successful. But yes. as you say, I'm constantly trying to control <laughs> yes. everything yes. and avoid. Things yeah, going yeah. Well. option A and plan yes. B and C and, C and D. D and Z. Z. And yeah. what it does is that you just borrow trouble. You just, you know, you, you just ruminate. And, mm. and oh, that rumination. Yeah. So mm-hmm. tell us about rumination. You know, and it's when you, 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 and I think it's when you lack even more control, when you, fe- you fear the future is uncertain, you don't know what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. And you start to worry about what can happen. Mm-hmm. And we never worry about, we never think, oh, beautiful things, things can, can happen. happen. Yeah, that is the negative things <laughs> that you start to. What can go wrong? Yeah, yeah. what yeah. can go wrong, and what can I do about it? Yeah. And as a some person who has high functioning anxiety, I feel like if I worry about it, everything is going to go well. <laughs> yeah. So if yeah. something goes wrong, it's because I didn't worry. Yeah, about yeah, it. yeah. I prepare yeah. for this moment. But it goes back to that saying, right? Um, prepare a hope, hope oh, for the best. Yes. Prepare for, for the, the worst. worst. Yeah, yeah. Right. So you know, you just ruminate and go down. Yeah. And so now, what what I've learned, and and that bungee jumping and and moving taught me this is that, a we I can do hard things. Mm-hmm. I have a history of success. Yes. Mm-hmm. And I have the tools in which I can know how to navigate whatever I'm feeling. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. The emotional agility, the emotional intelligence to be self-aware and then manage myself to build relationships to move forward. Yeah. And so that's. That's, you, you know, people say you don't, life doesn't get easier, you just get better, mm. and that's true. Yeah, and I really mm-hmm. can relate to that because I know for myself, I am one of these people that like to do change. Mm-hmm. And when I like to do change, I always remind myself because I too have some level of high functioning anxiety. Mm-hmm. I always think, okay, plan A, B, C, D, E. But one thing I've realized in my life is that my life has prepared me for the next chapter. Yes. So all the different things I've gone through helps me to, to come to the point where I can come to a point where I can say, yeah, but this is, this is going to be easy because I've done worse than this. I've right. gone through harder things than this. Right. And I use that kind of, I use that muscle memory to yes. say, yes, let's do it. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What we like to call self-talk. So, yeah, like yeah. Like when you're going through, and that's it. And, mm. some, and, and that's what we need to do when we're, we're going through anything, any type of change, any type of uncertainty any type of stressors in our life is to talk to yourself. Yes. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. People forget that. Hey. Talk positively to yourself. Yeah. 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 So, you know, you know, something that, and 75% of our um, self-talk is usually negative. Negative. Yes. Unknown to yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So you have to pay attention to it and talk, you know, talk back to that. So you look at it, you know, the same, what if I, I fall? Well, what if you fly? Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And if I fall, I get back up. Yeah, and that is success. Yes, that is yes. success. Yes. We are old enough now to know. No. It. and that's mm-hmm. it. With yes. age comes, yes. you know, knowledge yes. and understanding. Mm-hmm. 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 And 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 so let and that takes me to, just to one of the things we wanted to talk about in the workplace, mm-hmm. especially young people going into the workplace. And as a young person, sometimes going into a workplace, I can remember one of my first, two of my first jobs, not feeling supported by other women who had been there before, who mm-hmm. had, you know, not every, not everyone, but, yeah. you know, in particular, noticing that people didn't really want to see this young person come in and shine. And now I work with young, younger people and I try to encourage mm-hmm. and support. Where does this workplace type of bullying, is that, is that I, don't, I mean, you know, yeah. this is a positivity show, I don't want to go harp on that, but where does that come from and how does a young person or anybody going into a new work environment deal cool. with that? Yeah, that's such a great um, point. And I love that you say this is a positivity show and it's how do we handle those things that happen? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's not ignoring them. Exactly. Right. 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 Facing them. No, like, no, it's not how fake. How do we respond rather than react to mm-hmm. the situation? So as you like to say, I call it unhealed trauma. Uh, yes. So let's look at your example that you just gave there, right? You know, there's a storyline, there's an author that says, uh, whether you're the villain or the, or the hero depends on how you respond to your pain. Ah. And see, you're, you've chosen to respond by, okay, this was done to me. I want to ensure that I never do it to anybody right. else. Yes. Mm-hmm. Right. We often go in the organization where, first of all, the organization is not built for women. It was built for men. <laughs> and there are systemic barriers in place for women. We're often held down. And so there's limited spots. And when mm. you have limited spots, 
it often leads to women feeling that there's a competition. Insecurity. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. there's mm -hmm. not enough mm -hmm. for all of us, so mm -hmm. I have to. Um, and then we're, we're taught certain things that when we look at a woman and we see, we're, we're taught to be shy and retiring. Don't don't talk about your wings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. You're bragging oh, yeah, because you're not supposed to show off. Yeah. No, you're showing yeah, off. Yeah, yeah, know, yeah, yeah. And who does she think she is? She exactly. thinks she's better than mm -hmm. everybody else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you see somebody looking all confident and enthusiastic and you know energetic and you think back to well this has been beaten out of me not necessarily physically yeah, but yeah, you know yeah, the yeah. comments mm -hmm. um i fear being shunned so i learned how to stay in the box mm -hmm. and to dim my light and dim mm -hmm. your light mm -hmm. and so you meet a lot of women that their response is to, when they see it is to say whoa what's happening here yeah, mm -hmm. yeah why mm -hmm. why do you think you and, can come in and here why like are that? you yeah. so you know i used to get a lot oh you think you're, you're so glamorous or glamorous or yeah and and like and making, making it sound feel like there's something wrong yeah. with yeah. that sort of thing yeah. yes i like to dress i always have yeah, Come yeah. From a, a, a history of women mm, women yeah. in my family who'd like that so exactly i wouldn't say Own it and and and, and show it Why right not? and mm. if that is what you like and if it wasn't what i like i would not shun somebody because they didn't do right. what i yeah, did absolutely so why should someone shining intimidate somebody else because that's their conditioned response. Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you okay. know, we say that you you know, you're not responsible for your first thought, but you're responsible for your second thought yeah. and first action. Absolutely. Right. And so that is a that is a that gem. That is a gem. Yeah, yeah. We internalize um, the bias that have been done to us. Without yeah. clarity we can repeat it. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so when you look at some person for the first time, and I mean it happens, you look and you see somebody shining and you're like Oh, oh dear. Why them? Not <laughs> me. Yeah. And that's a conditioned response. You have to learn. And this is where the self talk that you talked about yeah. comes. Oh, that's condition. Yeah. Right. yeah. You need to see her as competition. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. And comparison. And comparison and is a thief of joy. Yes. And yes. And yes. is a thief of joy. That's yes. a steam issue. And so what you have to do is now say, okay, that was my first conditioned response mm -hmm. based on the culture, the values, how I was raised, you know, mm -hmm. when you're growing up. Girls are taught to cater to boys, so they'll mm. stay and do all the chores. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, I like to say the Guyanese proverb, tie the heifer loose the bow. <laughs> I, I love that. that. Yeah, tie yeah. the heifer loose, loose the bow. Okay. That's funny. You, you stay here. And so you have to recognize that's a conditioned response. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so what do I want? Let me choose how I want to respond. Yeah. And yeah. I'm going to respond by saying, wow, look yeah. at you. Yes. Yeah. Good yeah, for yes, you. yeah, yes. yeah. My first response is, "You look amazing. I love your skirt. I've always been that person that walk. I'm really yeah, yes, similar. Yes. Walk down the street, you see somebody, and I'm like, wow, yes. you look yes. fabulous.' And some people are taken back by it, you and know, and don't know how to respond. Don't know how to respond. Yes. Like, you know, it's, like, it's almost know. like, yeah, what, what 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 yes, yeah, exactly. You know, we don't know. We're not taught how to, to accept compliments, and, mm -hmm. and yes, and no, you." I like, sometimes I do say that, thank you for looking so good. But I thought you yes. talked this morning. Yes, and yes. Great. I love when I see brilliant, confident women demonstrating their yes. knowledge. Yeah. They mm -hmm. know how it is. And I mm -hmm. always say this to people like, you know, sometimes I was, um, the other day I talked to um, a colleague and I say, how are you doing? She said, fabulous. And then nice. she listed off all the her um, accomplishments. Oh, and wow. then I literally saw the moment when she realized, oh my goodness, does that sound cocky? And my son, like, I'm bragging. And then I can see the, she's starting to pull roll back. back. Yeah. I said, well, you know, but you know, I didn't yes. know. And it's like, no. No. no, no. Do you. Celebrate you. Celebrate you. Celebrate you. Yeah. yeah. Because that, that does so much for women that they don't understand. Yeah. Mm. I always say that if you're feeling down, if you don't, if you're feeling a lack of self-confidence, Go we'll find women who are succeeding and celebrate exactly, them. Yes. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Go them. where you're celebrated, celebrated, not where you're tolerated. Exactly, yeah. Mm -hmm. And also surround yourself with those kind mm -hmm. of women. Yes. And if you're around a group of women or men that are talking about others, that the time is spent talking and pulling Other others people. down, mm -hmm. that may not be the space no. for you. And yes. you need to know that that is not the space for you. But my question to you, Sonia, is how do you deal with that? Because for me, I try to... I, I try to be empathetic to mm -hmm. those women who are coming at you yeah, with she's that. she's very empathetic. Yeah, yeah. I had to work on that. <laughs> <laughs> I really, I see it as a reflection of them 
and not mm. a reflection of yes. me. Yes. So therefore, I don't know what they're dealing with, what they've come to the office with, what they've come to mm. the meeting with. Mm -hmm. And I really try to be empathetic because yes. not that I feel mm -hmm. I'm better than them because mm -hmm. I know I have my moments. Yeah. Right. But how do you tell young professional women and men how to cope with that in, in, the, in this new workplace? In a workplace now where you're working virtually and sometimes remotely yeah. and then working together. Mm -hmm. So it's a two-stage process. You're, you, where you are is a, fur, a, a further <laughs> down the... Girl, I'm old. I am a little older now. <laughs> it wasn't always there. Yeah. I wasn't always there. You recognize it's not about you. Yes. You say yes. to yourself, yes. I, I realize that mm -hmm. this is not about... But at the beginning, when you walk in, and we, we all, we are interdependent. We mm -hmm. all need validation. We've all yes. need to be seen. We all need to feel like we're belonging. Yeah. And that's why it hurts so much when you go yes. in and you, you, you feel that. Right. And the goal is not to harden your heart because then you turn, you internalize it and, and then, then become that. Yeah. Get, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. The best part is to recognize I cannot thrive being surrounded by this. Right. Mm -hmm. Ooh, some good tea was spilled today. Tune in next week for part two.